Okay. Okay. So thanks to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, so for the duration of this talk, X and Y will be smooth projective. over an algebraically closed field. And I will denote by dB of x, the bounded direct category of coherent sheaf over x. And I'm going to talk about an exact functor from dBx to dBy. All right, and so, well, there's a famous theorem by Orlov that says that, so this is an exact functor, and if f is fully faithful, then it is isomorphic to a Fourier Mokai transform. And I'll just remind you quickly of what that means. So these are the two projections, P1 and P2. And then the Fourier Mukai transform with kernel E is defined as RP2 lower star of E tensor LP1 upper star. All right. And so, well, the theorem, as I stated it, is definitely not in its complete generality, and a lot of people have worked on this. And, uh, for example, you don't actually need smooth. You can relax the hypothesis on X and Y a lot. And, for example, X and Y projective or a field works. And, uh, well, I'm going to write down one theorem that I'm interested in. And I'll tell you later why. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, most of what I will be saying today is joint work with Michelle Vandenberg. And uh, it doesn't say in the abstract because the paper wasn't done by then, but it's done now. And will be on the archive shortly. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take, take X projective <coughs> such that OX has no zero dimensional torsion. And Y quasi compact and separated. And then every fully faithful functor from perfect complexes on X to Oh, I still have a lot of blackboard, I didn't realize, uh, to the derived category of quasi-coherent sheaves on Y is isomorphic to the restriction of a Fourier Mokai functor associated to an object in the derived category of quasi coherent sheaves on X plus Y. All right, so this is all I'm going to say about. Uh, relaxing the hypothesis on X and Y, the other thing that you can try and do is keep X and Y smooth projective and uh, see what happens when uh, our functor F is not fully faithful. 
So is it still going to be true for any exact functor f that is, it is isomorphic to a Fourier Mukai transform? So in all of the original paper, uh, he thought that it should be still true, but uh, I think he has changed uh, his mind since then. And there's been some work on this by Canonical and Stellari, uh, who uh, would actually Smith's projective, relax this to a condition that is slightly weaker than asking for F to be full. And I'm going to say some more things about this. And in particular, what I will uh, give you is a counterexample to this theorem in the case where our functor is not fully faithful. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to erase this soon, but um, I just wanted to write it down. All right, but um, okay, this I can erase. Just like that's something really weird. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so let me begin where it all started for me. So, so I'm going to take f from dbx to dby. So this is going to be an exact functor, and then I'm going to pull back to db eta, where eta is generic point of y. And then I'm going to take a homology, and this goes to modules over the function field. And then for technical reasons, I'm going to dualize, uh, but you don't need to worry about that. So so I have this functor, I'm going to call it H. And then a question that I can ask is, is H representable? And uh, well, why do I care, first of all? Well, if it is representable, I claim that this is really nice because what you get is an object E tilde in dB of X base change to K of Y, such that H of C is equal to morphisms from J per star C into E tilde, where J is the base change. And now you can uh, well, from this, you can actually lift this to an object E in dB of X with Y. And then what happens is uh, something that you can think of as generic Fourier Mukai uh, behavior. So what happens is that I have my functor F and I have my E in dB of X cross Y, and those are not necessarily isomorphic, but they are isomorphic after pulling back to the generic point. Okay, so this is nice, but, uh, but I haven't told you whether or not H is in fact representable. And the answer is sometimes. So, well, okay, so this is a more general theorem, but I'm going to state it in this precise situation. So H is representable for transcendence degree K of Y less than or equal to one, or K of Y purely transcendental 
of transcendence degree 2. So, of course, this means y curve or y rational surface. And let me tell you the idea of the proof is as follows. So, so I have my functor and it looks like this. It goes into modules over k of y. So if this weren't over k of y, if this were just over k, uh, then uh, it is a result of Bondal and Van den Berg that this uh, is representable, but I have this uh, slightly different thing here that I'm going to a bigger field. But I can still sort of forget that I'm going to a bigger field, so this goes into modules over little k, and they're not so small m means finitely generated, big m means not necessarily finitely generated. And now their theorem doesn't apply anymore because, because this, this isn't a little m. But, uh, well, the proof sort of goes through. And so what I get is that I get an object in db of quasi coherent sheaves over x. Uh, but also, because I was actually going to modules over k of y, by Yoneda lemma, I also got an action here of k of y. But now, this is not quite what I wanted. I wanted something in here. And uh, that's not exactly the same thing, so I wanted something in quasi-coherent x, they changed k of y. So here the k of y is outside, and here it's inside. Uh, and clearly there's a map, there's a functor in this way, and then now the question becomes, is this functor uh, essentially subjective? And, uh, well, I had quite a hard time at the time, and uh, this is where the um, condition on the transcendence degree. Okay, so this means that, um, okay, so let me just do it in general. Uh, so when I have, like, let's take an abelian category, C, and then I can take C, K of Y, so this is going to be given by pairs of uh, A rho, where A is in C, and rho is in, um, from K of Y to, oh, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> rho K of Y to the endomorphisms of A. So the first thing that I'm doing here is taking C, base changing, and then taking the derived, sorry, taking C, base changing, and then taking the derived category. On the other hand, the other thing that I can do is first taking the derived category and then base changing. So like this. So in this case, again, I have pairs a rho, um, but now A is an object in the derived category of C, and rho is from K of Y to endomorphisms of A. So here I have endomorphisms in the derived category. And these two things are really different. They look like they're the same, but they're really not. But I do have a forgetful confunctor this way, right, that forgets that the actual was already in quasi-coherent sheath and instead puts it on the derived category. Uh, okay, so at the time, I was able to prove that this functor is su essentially subjective with these conditions on the field. Uh, and I was basically uh, building my lift essentially by hand, 
and I thought maybe I was being stupid for, uh, well, I thought maybe there was a better way. Uh, and it turns out that you can do better, but not that much better. So, uh, I think I can erase this. Okay. So it turns out there is, in fact, an obstruction to lifting that lives in Hochschild's cohomology. So I'm going to take C to be a growth index. Category and B, uh, sorry, K linear, little K linear. And B a K algebra. Is there more chalk? Because yeah. I'm all, oh, thanks. And then I have this functor that I haven't named yet, so I'm going to just call it forget. So this goes from db of cb to db of cb. OK, so this is clear now. So if b has Hochschild dimension less than or equal to Q, then forget is essentially subjective. Uh, less than or equal to one, you've got full and zero is an equivalent of categories. Okay, so in particular, so again, this theorem, I could have stated it in higher generality, B uh, could be a digi algebra, but then I'd need to define more things. And in particular, if B is a field, then Hochschild dimension is just transcendence degree. So, uh, what I'm getting is that uh, I could substitute this with transcendence degree less than or equal to 2. And then for higher transcendence degree, there's actually an obstruction to lifting. And, uh, no. But I'll tell you how. I need it somewhere, but I don't remember where. But, well, maybe it will come up. Okay, so, so this is what I'm starting with. And I want to lift it to here. And what we're going to do is to lift it at the infinity level. And uh, this is why we can do it. So. Sorry, no, inside. So an object here can be thought of as something in here. So these are A infinity B, the category of A infinity B modules where I inverted quasi isomorphisms. And this is actually an equivalence of categories. So uh, I'm going to get something here and then say, well, it's the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to start with M here, and then assume that it's vibrant. So what I get is uh, a 
complex and then I have V to harm V and M. So this map is k-linear and uh, it is compatible with the multiplication but only up to homotopy. Okay, so, so what does it mean to put a, an infinity B structure on M is the same as it's the same as having an infinity morphism this way. And we can do this step by step, uh, starting with this one that we have already. Well, maybe I'm going to call it phi1. And uh, at each step, I'm going to get an abstraction. And the abstraction lives in Hochschild's cohomology, B F star C. Um, um. Okay, so if these all vanish, then I can lift the whole thing and get an infinity morphism. And in particular, this is going to be true if B has, has Hochschild dimension less than or equal to 2. And the other two things are similar. Uh. Okay. And now, um, maybe you should have read that, but too late. Uh, now you can ask yourself what would happen for higher transcendence degrees. And, uh, well, things really do go wrong. Okay, so I'm going to take y of a case smooth projective. Uh, not a point. P1 or elliptic curve. And then there exists a finitely generated field extension L of transcendence degree 3 with an object Z in dB of quasi-coherent L, which does not lift to DB sorry, L goes inside. Okay, and what can we do with this? So now I can take X smooth projective with function field equal to L. And I'm going to define the following functor. So I'm going to start from perfect complexes over X, pull back to generic point. This goes to D of L. And then I'm going to take to the direct category of quasi coherent shoes over Y by sending L to my Z that I defined in 1. And this is enough to define my functor because L has global dimension 0. Uh, 
And well, this functor is pretty weird, but the good thing is that phi is not the restriction. of a Fourier Mokai transform. All right, so this is a counterexample to the theorem I proved at the beginning in the non-fully faithful case. Uh, okay, so let me see how much I can prove of this. So first of all, um, let me start with part two, actually, because that's the easy part. So once you believe that you can find an object Z, so this is showing that this functor is not the restriction of Fourier Mokai is pretty easy. So assume that phi equal to phi V. Actually, I'm just going to forget that I defined it on perf. I'm just going to. Uh, <coughs> take the whole thing right from uh, quasi-coherent. So what happens if I compose with push forward from the generic point? I can take L here. So it turns out this is the same thing as I eta times identity upper star of V. V is my kernel of L. And this guy here, it lives in D of quasi-coherent of spec L cross Y, which is the same thing as D of quasi-coherent of Y L. So this looks promising. So on the other hand, this is going to be the same as psi composed with the push forward of L. But now this is just Z. Uh, but now this means precisely that Z is the push forward of something that lives in here, which is exactly uh, what I had decided that Z shouldn't be able to do. OK, so this is first part two. And uh, for part one, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, proof by example. Uh, um, because maybe it will even be more interesting for you guys. So OK. So my example is going to be x equal y equal p3. So my L is k adjunct three variables, x, y, z. And now consider Ox plus Ox1. So this is a partial tilting object. And um, so instead of using the balance and equivalence, I'm just going to go to mod of kq, where uh, q is the chronic quiver with four arrows. OK, but because that's what I get from uh, taking the endomorphisms of, uh, of this guy over here. OK, and I'm going to consider the following representation. So I have L. 1x, y, z, l. And then my object is going to be r plus r1. So this is in db mod kq. And now I want to put an l, l action on this. And uh, what's an l action again? So that L goes to the endomorphisms over dB mod PQ of Z. But this I can actually write down because I only have two of them. I mean, 
the sun is in that. If your path algebra is that as the morphism to the end of morphism bringing the derived category is complete, is that how you work it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this so I, um, I started with this guy. So if I. This is OX plus OX1. So if I were taking up to OX3, then I would get the balance and equivalence by taking the endomorphisms. And this would give me a, a quiver that looks like this. Uh, but instead, I'm only going to take this part. Actually, no. I'm going to Um, okay, so this looks like this, and R, and here I have my X1. And uh, so morphism is going to look like this. This is 511, 522, 5210. And now I'm going to have to erase something. All right, so now you can compute things explicitly, and you can say that, well, first of all, phi t1 should be a derivation. That's just because you need compatibility with multiplication here. And then uh, you got a precise condition for z to lift to db mod kql. So this is the th same thing as asking for phi t1 to be an inner derivation. But this you can. I mean, this we can really do by hand. But now this means that what we want is something in here. So phi 2 1 is going to be living in here. And uh, for this not to lift, it means that I want to ask for this not to be an inner derivation. Uh, so basically, I'm done if I prove that this is different from zero. But uh, so it turns out this is equal to HH3. Uh, of the L into Hong, of R into R. But now you stare at this for a second and you realize that this here is actually L. So I'm getting HH3 of LL. And this is non zero by Hochschild constant Rosenberg theorem. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. <laughs>